We're also seeing, uh, for example, uh, across uh, uh, the English Channel, Deutsche Telekom testing its new private G network solution with Microsoft as well. And this time it's in a lab environment in uh, Bonn. And so uh, Deutsche Telekom is emphasizing that th this launch is following a successful pilot that they had with a major pharmaceutical company in Germany. So this is you know, establishing, okay, this is something that has actual real world capabilities. And so now what we're seeing is that DT is saying that the new offering complements its current portfolio of 5G private networks for industrial use in Germany. And I think, yes, uh, that DT has done a pretty remarkable job in that regard in terms of you know, establishing private wireless as a, certainly a, a viable use case, but also something that the, the, the telcos themselves can uh, make a, a major contribution. As we know, uh, there's a do-it-yourself option. Um, from my view, that's a bit limited in its uh, applicability, but there will be enterprises that will try that, but also you have managed service offerings of it uh, that involves, say, you know, the cloud providers and you know, specialists who focus on wireless connectivity and certainly private 5G is a big part of that mix now. And so it's clearly the telcos, I think, can have a huge role in this. Uh, because you know their forte, their DNA is in spectrum. It's in radio access technology and so forth. You get the idea. So private uh, wireless and private 5G in particular, I think, is well suited for them to diversify their revenue streams. And with that in mind, uh, we're seeing uh, their collaboration with Microsoft, specifically taking on the Azure uh, MEC capability, which includes the Azure private 5G core service that is deployed on naturally the Azure Stack Edge. And this can provide customers uh, with a campus network offering, which includes the planning, the building of the private network using again, the Azure services with RAN components, as well as the operations offered as you know, one unified package managed service that I touched on. Now, further boosting uh, the uh, DT private 5G network solution uh, in combination with Microsoft is DT, Ericsson, Mavenir, and Sienna's Blue Planet recently did a joint demonstration that showed the benefits of multi-domain orchestration with open APIs to automatically create new slice-based services on demand. So this is coming together. Yes, as you can see, there's intricacy here involved. It has to involve multi-domain orchestration, being able to uh, sustain clearly the commitment to open networking, certainly open RAN comes to mind, but certainly it's the overall open 5G mission that's important here, as well as, again, using AI to help drive the automation that's gonna be integral to enabling network slicing, which I believe is something that uh, the operators can really take advantage of because it's a connectivity type of offering. And again, connectivity is something that the uh, operators, the CSPs know thoroughly well. And with that, Todd, now what is your take on what's going on here uh, with you know what DT is doing in terms of private 5G? Well, it's always interesting to me. Whenever we're talking about something interesting, innovative, uh, different, it, it always comes up. Deutsche Telekom is probably behind it. Um, I don't know, but this company seems to look ahead and they seem to look at things that are, it's, they're Germans, you know, the Germans are very focused on making things better, finding ways to analyze them, finding ways to do things. You know, it's been that way through, through technology, automobiles. I mean, German automobiles, look how incredibly well built they are anyway. But here in this space, to me, this is always a really interesting thing. Um, in, to me, uh, Deutsche Telekom, the Team Viewer Frontline X Assist, this is fascinating. It's an augmented reality remote support product. It can also be added to that campus network smart uh, product you were talking about. This whole thing allows experts to connect remotely to a pair of AR glasses, augmented reality, while 5G connectivity then allows for live support and knowledge transfer while potentially reducing costs by eliminating travel and minimizing, minimizing downtime. This to me, I swear to God, Ron, I'm thinking of this as we're looking at it and I'm thinking 2001 A Space Odyssey. We're seeing, we're seeing 
Google Glass came out, was that in 2008, I think, or 11, 2000, somewhere between 2008 to 2011. It was seen as, oh my God, this is going to be amazing. I remember writing stories about it when I was writing as a tech journalist about Google Glass, how Google Glass is going to be used by a jet engine um, uh, repair person. And they're standing there under the engine, in front of the engine, and they see in the corner of their eye the manual for this engine and they can get the torque spec for this fastener or they can get whatever information they need or they can look at a parts catalog and say oh yes i need to order that part and order it we we saw that for a couple of years then google glass went away and other things have come up but even now you know 10 years later 15 years later we still haven't seen a monetized version of something like this that's really happening in the enterprise for big companies to be able to do this kind of work. This thing from Deutsche Telekom, this might finally make it happen. Um, I really feel like this is the kind of thing that it took somebody, a brilliant idea, and then a way to monetize it. And now maybe we're at that place. So I really think this is amazing. Um, Deutsche Telekom also said that a broad selection of robotics, video analytics, and IoT use cases will be made available, which is what I'm saying. They're monetizing these things that we were just like imagining 10, 10 15 years ago. And these things will be tailored to specific customer needs, like, what, like we're talking about, creating end-to-end -end services for customers. I think this is amazing. And let's hope that this time it's for real. Yeah, and uh, to your point, I like the 2001 uh, Space Odyssey analogy uh, because your point about the first iterations of VR and AR having limited commercial impact happened to coincide with the less heralded 2010 sequel to 2001 with right. Roy Scheider in it. And so I, I think uh, that uh, it's demonstrating an important point. Uh, this is still a use case that has a great deal of potential, but the breakthrough hasn't really happened on a society-wide basis or on a broader basis, sort of like when Uber broke out or Netflix broke out in terms of here's a great use case that's leveraging advances in mobile uh, technology. And I think you know, we see other players like Qualcomm making important contributions to advancing AR, VR capabilities at the chipset level, also uh, labeled XR, extended reality. And what I think is also interesting on the business side is that it can, I think, enhance and augment things like research and design. You know, being able to leverage, you know, an AR uh, capability can definitely, again, streamline the, the overall research process, be able to more uh, comprehensively conceptualize, you know, how will this, uh, you know, design work more effectively. And likewise with, you know, uh, a companion uh, technologies and capabilities such as digital twins which yeah. I think uh, definitely uh, has uh, more potential. And so, yeah, this is, it's brewing. I think a, a key factor will be when the operators on a more mainstream level, i.e. the majority who have deployed 5G start using 5G standalone. Right now, it's only about a quarter. And so once that a number moves, once that needle moves, then I can uh, see what you're talking about. This is something that, you know, I think Deutsche Telekom, we agree, is uh, really uh, more at the forefront and as a result, uh, can, you know, encourage other operators to, you know, uh, pick up the mantle more. And I, I want to add something. It also, it's incredible. This was all with Google, the Google Glass thing. That's a consumer company. Finally, we're seeing this actually start with a tech company, a tech company that's focused at enterprises, at business. That's why I think this is finally going to be effective and happen because Google Glass for the consumer market, yeah, that isn't wasn't going to work. We, are, you know, but for business, showing business how a telecom company, which already gives them premier telecommunications, now is adding this thing which will give them almost live, well, not almost, but live video communications as well that can help them solve these problems. Uh, a uh, a repair person out in the field at a remote site, an oil and gas place where they can't communicate now through satellite or 5g or enhanced 5g whatever they can bring in oh my god that person can now connect and find out hey in this remote space where the temperatures are terrible or whatever i need somebody to look over my shoulder now we can do that kind of thing and it's all because telecoms are involved and I, and if this works for dt oh man if it's for deutsche telecom makes this work verizon's going to have it t-mobile's going to have it 
everyone's going to build these things. So this is the start. And that's where the innovation from Deutsche Telekom is. Like I said, that's where the innovation, when it starts, it just gets bigger and bigger. So this is the thing I believe really firmly. We didn't see it with Google Glass 15 years ago. I think, I predict, we're going to see it this time. This is where it's going to finally launch because it brings together telecom and these needs and these um, reliable infrastructures of 5G and satellite and all these things. That, to me, is where this is finally going to work. And we're going to see it happen over the next couple of years. It's really going to be amazing to watch. Yeah, and I think that's right on cue because I was thinking remote locations, what else are the operators doing to you know, deliver you know, 5G capabilities that can make a, a big difference that have an impact on society. It all and fits with, together. It's like pieces coming yes. together with a puzzle. Exactly. 